Okay, so welcome to the Dragon Shed, or not the Dragon Shed, for another Dragon Food. Um, this time I'm doing a another slow cooker recipe. Now this recipe I've got a couple of variations. One where you make the sauce separately, poach the chicken and then combine them when you serve. And then uh, a couple where you actually do it all together. Um, this is the only one I've got that's actually a slow cooker version. And I prefer this because it's lazy, <laughs> it's easy. So I'm starting with um, two onion, two red onions. Um, you don't have to be red, but I prefer red. They're slightly sweeter anyway. And um, these are this is three red onions, but they're only little giddy ones. Um, I think last year was quite bad for most growing things, so I haven't been particularly big onions. So just compensate as you go. I've got here four cloves of garlic. I'm just going to whack them through. I press Concerned about the bits that don't get pressed. Let you go in anyway, but it generally needs to be fairly small. So, onions, garlic. And now on to a slight sweet um, taste. So this is some um, raisins that I've steeped in a little bit of Earl Grey. Um, you can use just plain water if you want to. You use other teas. Um, you can use prunes as well, you want about 50 grams. Put them in with the water. And then some cocoa. Now I'm not sure if I've got the full 50 grams in here. So, we shall see. Yeah, I've probably got at least 50 grams. Okay, so no worries. Excuse me one second, camera. Bring you back in again. Okay, so you can use um, all cocoa or a bar of dark chocolate. How much have got on there? it or you can cut it, whichever is easier. Now you, if you're using a bar of chocolate you want a really strong tiny chocolate. At least 50 or 60 percent cocoa. If you can get higher then that's good. But don't spend out on the really expensive stuff. And then we go on to our spices. So this is a tablespoon of, you can't see that. There you go. A tablespoon of smoked paprika, um, uh, two teaspoons of ground cumin and cinnamon, a uh, half teaspoon of ground clove, and a teaspoon of coriander seed. That. 
and then we want the chilies. Now I've looked around for some ancho or um, chipotle um, dried and smoked, but I just can't find them anywhere. I can get a little pot of paste, which is tiny, which is only probably one and a half chilies worth, which is nowhere near enough. So I'm using these, which are fairly mild chilies. If I need to up the chili potion, I will add some sriracha or something later on. So just taking off the tops there. And that is my basic marinade done. So all I need to do now is just whiz it down. So whiz it toy out. It's going to take some time and it's going to be quite noisy. These are boneless and skinless. That's because it's easier. Chop them into rough quarters. Um, you can do these on the bone if you want to. Just then, just uh, slash the the flesh instead. So I'm just very roughly chopping these in. You can do this with um, chicken breast as well. But I think that thighs they kind of hold up better to a long slow cooking. This is enough for two to four people, depending on how hungry you are really, and what you serve it with. surface. So I'll give that another stir before I use it obviously. Um, if you're going to marinate this for anything longer than eight hours, um, give it a stir every four or so. This is just going to go into the fridge overnight and I'll put it on to cook in the morning. So my marinade or my meat has marinated overnight. As I think I said before, you can marinate this for as long as you like, ideally four hours. It's kind of the minimum you want to go for. Um, you can do it for a couple of days if you like, but give it a stir every eight hours or so. I'm going to go in the crock of my slow cooker. As with most slow cooker recipes, you're not necessarily adding a lot of water. You're expecting things to break down on their own without requiring any kind of help. So I'm going to add one tin of chopped tomatoes. And then one tin's worth of water. Bare minimum liquids going in. And then slightly odd ingredient, but it doesn't taste. You're just thickening the sauce here. So two tablespoons of peanut butter. This is a natural crunchy, but use whatever you've got. It doesn't have to be crunchy. Two tablespoons peanut butter. And 
and one star anise going in there. And I'll just give that a quick stir. Obviously, if you're uh, not into peanuts, you can't have peanuts for whatever reason. You can use other nuts if you want, or leave it out. You might need to use a bit of corn flour or something to thicken the sauce at the end. Right. So, so that, that's all my major ingredients in, um, and that now goes on to um, a low setting for about eight hours. You can go 10 or 12 if you want to, but eight hours is about right. So I'll be back to you in about eight hours. Okay, so this has had a little bit more than eight hours. It's got a nice bit of sauce to it. I could probably have done with slightly less water, but you never can tell how it's gonna come down. So just serving this with a bit of brown rice. And a flat. You really do need something to soak up all this lovely juiciness. Now mole is essentially just sauce. As I said at the beginning, most mole recipes, it's just the sauce that you're cooking, and then it's down to you to add whatever meat you want. So that pretty much done. The rest of that can go into um, a freezer box for later or for dad when he gets home from work. So 